Phase two of the Marvel Cinematic Universe exposed the growing pains of a cultural phenomenon and the action figures that came with them, giving us some of the best and the worst that Marvel had to offer. But in the end, Phase 2 showed us just what the MCU would become. Iron Man 3 opened the second phase of the MCU in May of 2013. The film was loosely based on Warren Ellis' extremist storyline from the comics. It was generally well received by fans, although the bait and switch with the Mandarin subplot really irritated longtime comic readers. But it was a huge box office smash, bringing in $1.2 billion. Downey Jr. used the film to explore deeper aspects of Tony Stark's personality, which would pay huge emotional dividends as the MCU continued. Iron Man 3 ended up with a nice collection of action figures, and we should probably be thankful because with all of the different armors that Tony blew up at the end of this movie, there could have been like a hundred different figures that would have absolutely stretched our wallets beyond the breaking point. But as it is, we got the main armor from the movie, which is nice. I think this looks really good. I, I love coming back to the gold. It, it's interesting because it's almost like an inversion, as far as the color scheme goes, of the classic red and gold armor, where that armor typically has the red on the inside and then the gold on the outside. This one has more of the, the gold inside. It's a really good look. It has basically the same head that all of the armors have had. We've got the circular arc reactor, and this Marvel Legends figure is nice. You know, it's good, typical Marvel Legends articulation, but I think we're going to see when we get to the Diamond Select that there was a way to do this figure and make it even better. The other figure that came out at the time of the movie in the Marvel Legends line was the Iron Patriot figure, and this is a different sculpt. I think it may share a little bit of similarities as far as that goes, but, you know, it's the exact same size. It's nice when they fit together like that, but this has the, the, the Iron Patriot look from really when I think it was Norman Osborn that actually wore this armor in the comics when he took over S.H.I.E.L.D. and named it Hammer. So that's one more way in which you take 60 years of comic history, take the parts that you want, and you're able to create the MCU out of it. But these are two nice figures from the Marvel Legends line in 6-inch scale from Iron Man 3. Now... They went back in the Infinity series and gave us this one, this like all gold suit. I have to admit, I don't really remember this that much from the movie. I'm not sure if it was one of the armors that was down in Tony's arm armory when his house got destroyed or if it was part of what... Oh, actually, that was in the second movie. So this may have been one of the armors at the very end where, you know, he brought the pain with like a gazillion armors coming. But this came in a two-pack with... Yes! There he is, Happy Hogan. Little did we know that Happy Hogan was going to end up being such a major part of the Spider-Man franchise, even with his uh, dalliance with Aunt May. But it's nice to get Happy on a good frame. I think it's a pretty decent representation of John Favre as far as the head sculpt goes. I've had several of you guys in the past comment that you think that I look like Happy Hogan. Don't really know how to take that. I guess that's a nice thing, but anyway, I'm I'm working to look less like happy as time goes on. It's kind of great that John Favreau actually directed the first and second Iron Man movies, but then gets a figure for Iron Man 3. So that's, you know, little little touch of irony there. Now, the figures that I think are the best from Iron Man 3 are the ones that Diamond Select did, the seven inch figures that came out to comic shops. And just that little bit of extra scale just allows for more detail. This one has a nice Don Cheadle head sculpt underneath the good roadie head there. It did come with uh, an alternate mask. So if you want to have him with the mask on, you can have that. We got roadie in the Iron Patriot armor. And this one just has a little bit more of that metallic look. I think the way that they use that more metallic paint really brings out the shine to that a little bit better. But I think the real standout from this entire set of figures is 
the Mark. I think this is the Mark 42 armor. I get confused on all the numbers. You guys can correct me in the comments. But this Diamond Select Iron Man is really good. Really good looking metallic figure. Great paint apps. Lots of detail in this armor. All the way down to like the little circuitry parts and everything. It's it's uh, all the way around 360 degrees. Just an outstanding action figure. And one that I actually had displayed down in my Iron Man armory. I had to go dig this thing off of the shelf because it looks so good. I've got him down there with my comic Iron Man. But great figure for Iron Man 3. A pretty good movie. One that literally could have been a hundred action figures deep. Thankfully, we only got five or six. Ah, Thor the Dark World. Where to start? Hemsworth and Hiddleston were excellent as always in their roles of Thor and Loki, respectively. The film brought some great ideas from the comics, particularly Malekith the Dark Elf, from Walt Simonson's acclaimed run on the title. But somehow, it just didn't click. That Jane and Asgard section was particularly cringy. But despite all of this, the movie still made $644 million worldwide and set the stage for the next two Thor solo movies. How great is it that Thor The Dark World, which is generally panned as the worst of all of the MCU films, actually has two of the very best Marvel Legends figures in the entire line. The Infinity series that came out just within the last few years went back and revisited Thor The Dark World and gave us this brilliant, I mean, absolutely brilliant version of Chris Hemsworth as Thor. I mean, look at all of the detail, even like the braiding of his hair coming back to this ponytail coming through his locks. He's got this incredible chest armor with this, I mean, it almost looks like they've got gold metallic flake in this paint. There's detail on the, the knobs where his cape comes in. This is a fine, fine figure. And even unlike most capes, so this cape is very smooth on the back, but look, it's got the rough, almost like velvety interior texture on the front. Of course, he has a really good version of Molnir. This is truly one of the best Thor figures that we have from what is, bar none, the worst Thor movie made. Now, they didn't stop there because this actually came as a two-pack with Lady Sif. And it is just spectacular. Again, the detail on her armor, all of the little sculpting on her silver armor. You can even see each of the individual pieces of chain mail that she has up across her, her breastplate there. She comes with a couple of sweet swords and her handmaiden shield. She's got great detail all the way down through her shin plates. But this head sculpt is Oh, I mean, it is just spot on. Now, granted, they do have the advantage of doing this after the uh, the face rendering technology and how that has really advanced, but they did just such a fine, fine job with this. I mean, women's faces are notoriously difficult to sculpt into action figures because many times they're very smooth. They don't have a lot of like carved in distinctive features the way that men's faces have. And so it's really hard to get a good approximation of a female's face. And so when you see one like this, you've really got to appreciate it. Plus look at almost, I mean, it almost is like the individual strands of her hair are coming down. That is a really good action figure. Now, I made a big deal about how good this facial sculpt is. Let's just see what old technology looked like. Here is the Diamond Select Thor that came out at the time of the movie. Now, what the... This is like some kind of Cro-Magnon, like, Planet of the Apes Thor. Like, that doesn't look like Hemsworth at all. Now, they made the effort. They went with the braid and the ponytail, so I appreciate that they that they did that. And, of course, they've got the detail because Marvel Select really does go into a lot more sculpting detail. It's a nice paint application. We're actually going to see this figure again when we get to Age of Ultron because he has the exposed arms as opposed to the chainmail arms that the Marvel Legends figure has. And this look actually really does duplicate from both Dark World and into Age of Ultron. They're really, really close but that head sculpt, I can't call that close. However, 
I can at least recognize that that's an attempt to be Chris Hemsworth. I don't know what we're supposed to make of this. So this is Jane Foster. This is Natalie Portman, I guess. Maybe, maybe sometimes if you tilt it a little bit, but good grief. That, that doesn't look, to me, that doesn't look anything like Natalie Portman. I mean, this, this figure has virtually zero articulation. Of course, she's got her Dorothy slippers on, so you know she's not going to stand up very well. You can't really move the legs because this, you know, cape thing's going on. She may not have on any pants. That's not very good, but it's just, that is just, even if you do think it looks like Natalie Portman, that's the most unattractive version of Natalie Portman you're ever going to find, except for her, you know, possessed head sculpt, which somehow they took an unattractive Natalie Portman and made it even worse. So this is going to go down as the worst figure from the worst Marvel movie. Somebody's got to be last. I'm sorry. It's you. During the time of Dark World, they were still kind of mixing and matching between 6-inch, 7-inch figures and the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale. And we did get some unique figures in the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale that I wanted to take a look at. Of course, we got another Loki. And that's a, yeah, you know, it's a decent Loki. I mean, his costume's pretty accurate. Certainly not as good as some of the other Loki figures that we've seen as we've gone through all of these. We did get two of the figures that were unique to this movie and these are actually really well done so i'm going to give a lot of credit for the dark elf figure so he's kind of one of the dark elf warriors that mask is so creepy they did a nice job with his battle armor he's got his kind of claw his fighting accessory and i love it when they don't skimp on the back you know there's a ton of detail here on the back of the figure that maybe you're not really going to see you're certainly not going to see it when it's in the package and you're trying to buy it, it, you know, he's got his braided hair coming down, but that mask, oh, that mask is so creepy. And then I had such high hopes for the curse figure. And hey, you know, it's a good action figure. I mean, it looks like what curse looks like in the movie. A lot of gray, you know, not a lot of excitement happening with this figure, but he's got a decent sculpt and, and a pretty accurate head for what happened in the movie. I just was disappointed because this is one of the few original creations from Walt Simonson's epic run on the Mighty Thor that has made its way into the films. And it doesn't look anything like what Walt Simonson drew. So that was kind of disappointing to me, but we did at least get a fairly varied set of figures from Dark World. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, introduced two of the most influential players to the MCU the Russo brothers, who directed this film and along with producer Kevin Feige became the architects of the overarching Infinity Saga storyline. The Russos understood that Cap isn't exactly a superhero, no magic powers, no laser eye beams, so they adapted Ed Brubaker's groundbreaking Winter Soldier comic run into a tense spy thriller in the style of classic 1970s movies. It totally worked and showed that the Marvel characters could cross over numerous movie genres. Of course, it didn't hurt that Brubaker's comic story, bringing back Cap's World War II partner Bucky Barnes as a mysterious Soviet assassin, was utterly brilliant. After a couple of stub toes to start Phase 2, a new course had been set. The first Avengers movie was a huge film and really showed the box office staying power of the Marvel movies. But if you want to talk about what was really a turning point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think that it's Captain America the Winter Soldier because that is where they showed that these movies are not all just going to be big superhero blow-up movies, that they can do different things, that they can create an intriguing spy thriller and make it an absolute smash. And that's what we saw with Winter Soldier, which is one of my absolute favorite movies in the MCU canon. Now, as good as that movie was, I this figure's garbage. This is the Marvel Legends six-inch Steve Rogers, Captain America, and it took me like two days to find this figure because I went through my Captain America box over and over again. I kept shuffling through the figures and I would see this one and I would move it out of the way because that head sculpt 
is so generic that I had no idea that this was actually supposed to represent Chris Evans' look in the film. I mean, it's obviously, you know, the the Winter Soldier cap. He's got the blue shield. This is the uniform that he has. This is not a comic uniform. This is the movie uniform. But that's the most generic, blonde-haired Captain America head sculpt that you could imagine. I, I mean, I kept skipping over it because I'm like, nah, that's not a movie figure. That's just a that's just a comic version of him wearing a shield uniform. It's nah, I was gonna say it's a little bit better here. It's not. That's terrible too. So it's really sad that our hero in the film gets the worst figure out of all of them because the rest of these are pretty daggum good. Starting with Black Widow. Now, we just aren't getting enough Black Widow 6-inch figures, but this one more than makes up for what we've been missing. That is a terrific, for the time and for the scale, head sculpt of Black Widow. They did a really nice job with the paint. She's got a lot of life to her face. She has a lot of color to it. She's got some, some you know, that lipstick really comes out and, and reflects against her, her red hair. So much detail all around this figure. Of course, she came with her dual pistols, and she's got her Widow's Blast, which is a nice touch, a nice throwback to the comics. This is a good figure. I, I definitely like this one. But from the six-inch line, nothing comes close to the Winter Soldier. Oh, man, this one is so, so great. Look at just all of the detail that this one has, particularly with his robotic arm with the red star on it. Of course, he's got his blade back here on the back, all of this vest with the tactical gear, so much nice sculpting through the pants. This is what you can do when you really put the work in on a six-inch figure, and I love that mask. He came with an alternate head, which I think is down in the bottom of the box. We'll have to pull that out later, but this is what we're going to start to expect to see as the Marvel Universe continues and as the figures from the Marvel Cinematic Universe keep going. But thankfully, we weren't left with just these three figures because our friends at Marvel Select did come through with 7-inch versions. Now, this is a much, much better head sculpt of Chris Evans. And you can see it's the exact same costume that we just looked at. It's just done some... Even, you know, you can see the belt... All of it, it's just, this one is just done so much better. You know, in in the future, as we move forward, you'll see that the Marvel Legends actually are just as good, if not better sculpted than the Marvel Select. But back when Winter Soldier came out, this one, the other one doesn't hold a candle. This is just a, a very, very much superior figure. And as good as Cap was, he was outdone by our very first version of the Falcon. Such a good representation of Falcon. I love that look on his face. The goggles are great. He has his, you know, paratrooper military garb on. Really nice job with the camo. It's even got the flag on there. The shin guards, the knee guards, all of the details, even down to the zipper being painted. But they didn't skimp on the wings. Look at how huge these wings are. Now, they're not really articulated. They, they kind of fit in. But his wing pack with the jets has got painted detail throughout. This is a nice figure and really worthy of Cap's best friend, Sam Wilson, and the role that he played not only in Winter Soldier, but moving forward with the rest of the MCU. Guardians of the Galaxy is the movie that made true believers out of even the nayest of naysayers. A ragtag group of misfits, including a talking tree, set out on a comedy heist film that ends up creating one of the most endearing families ever seen on the silver screen. The flick connected with an entirely new audience and made the casual viewer into a Marvel zombie. As influential as the first Avengers film was with its record-setting box office, it was Guardians of the Galaxy that opened the doors and let everybody in. Now we're cooking with gas. For me, Guardians of the Galaxy was the first film in the MCU where Hasbro gave us all of the main characters 
in the main Marvel Legends line, and we're not having to supplement with mini mates or with figures from, you know, import figures or diamond select figures. They actually got it right. And even though this first wave of figures, it's great. It, it, it pales in comparison to the figures from the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. This was spot on. And it begins with Star-Lord, man. And nice version here. I love he's got his, his satchel where he can carry the Infinity Stone. He did come with an additional head so you can have him with his masked head. And that's relatively uh, indicative of what he wore in the comics. You've also got the big weapon thingy that they used and failed at trying to kill Ronan with. So nice figure to get started. Love the Drax figure. You know, he's basically wearing his prison garb here. All kinds of details on his tattoos all the way around, even across his entire back. Good head sculpt. Definitely picks up Dave Bautista there. I dig that. He came with both of his blades that will fit into holsters on his legs. That always makes me happy because it keeps me from losing the accessories over time. So pretty, pretty sweet Drax. Really nice. Great, great body frame for him. And of course, these are all new arms because... These tattoos are textured. They're raised. That's not just paint apps. That's actually sculpted in detail. So they went all out on that. Gamora is probably the weakest of the head sculpts. Yeah, yeah that, you know, that, that doesn't look much like uh, Zoe Saldana. It gets better. You know, she, she's going to get a figure in another movie, so don't give up. You just got to wait and see when the uh, Phase 3 video comes out. But at least we got her. You know, at least we completed the team. They didn't leave the female character out. She does have good, you know, weathering and, and kind of that tapering of the color to her, her hairstyle. But yeah, out of the five, this one is number five for sure. Then you got the Dream Team. You got my boy Groot in all all of his tree glory, and Rocket. Now, Rocket's a little kind of squat, and, and he's obviously pretty limited articulation-wise. It would be nice to get some lower body articulation, but when you pair him up with Groot, it just looks terrific. They go together so well. Uh, this Groot is big. He's, he's really tall. I mean, he's, he's probably 10 inches tall, so he towers over the other figures in the line, which is appropriate. I mean, it fits in absolutely perfectly. So I love, these, I love having these two together. They look so good. Now, to complete this movie in the Infinity line from a couple of years ago, they went back and they gave us the main bad guy. Ronan the Accuser. And this really, this is pretty obvious what the difference of a few years in action figure technology can make. I mean, so this figure with this, you know, facial technology and the paint apps on there, look at how spectacular this looks compared to this. Now, there was nothing wrong with this figure. There was certainly nothing wrong when it, when it came out, but this has now become the standard for Hasbro mass market Marvel Legends MCU figures is you're getting figures that look this good. I mean, that is really, really something. Of course, he's got his, you know, smash smash some Cree brains out thing. Good detail all the way down the back, even in the areas that you don't really see very well. They've still got paint detail and whatnot, but it's really about how good that head is, which is really where all these figures come down. I love the sculpting. I love the articulation, but if you don't nail the head, it's not even worth it. So we are now entering into a new phase of Marvel Legends when it comes to MCU figures, starting with Guardians of the Galaxy. How do you top one of the biggest movies of all time? More characters, bigger threats, specialer special effects. And for the most part, it worked. Age of Ultron was a worthy sequel to the first Avengers film, with James Spader's title threat a creepy, powerful, well-developed foe. I think the biggest problem this movie faces is that it just hasn't aged as well as the original Avengers film, and it can't compare in scope or emotion to the two Avengers films that came after it. I mean, something has to be the worst Avengers movie. That said, any flick that brought home almost a billion and a half dollars and teased Captain America lifting Molnir must be judged as a success.
Age of Ultron was a big movie with a big cast, and we've got a lot of figures to look at from this film. But let's start with arguably the star of the show, the Ultron Build-A-Figure. Now, Ultron has had numerous looks in the comics, most of which don't have arms that come off. That's the beauty of a Build-A-Figure. It pops right back on. This really does represent that figure incredibly well. It's big. He's much larger than the six-inch figures that were in the same line. And, of course, he was a Build-A-Figure, so that makes sense. They could go a little bit larger. All of that tech detail remains all around this figure. I probably would have gone with maybe a little bit more paint wash, a little bit more detail to bring out some of this circuitry, but we do have a really strong looking Ultron and a pretty good amalgam of the different versions of Ultron from the books. You know, my classic Ultron that that I first came across was in the Secret Wars comic book back in 1984 and that, out, that Ultron would have been visually very boring on the screen, even though it's the classic version. This, I think, was probably a better choice, and it definitely brought the menace of the character to life. Now, across several lines, we did get the main members of the Avengers, and let's look first at the ones that I have in six-inch form in Marvel Legends. I do have a War Machine. We've got a Rhodey. He came out in the Marvel Legends line. This is very similar to the previous War Machines that we've gotten. I know that he came with some kind of, you know, war weapons, Gatling gun, missile launcher kind of stuff. Uh, but I have no idea where that is. So that's, you know, pretty okay. The Captain America is actually quite good. Now, there's a little bit of difference between his look in Age of Ultron and his look in some of the other movies. One of those is he's got the red that comes around the star on his chest. You know, they didn't make drastic changes in his costume, but there are subtle ones that you can pick out as we go from film to film. It's a decent Chris Evans representation, but nothing like what we're going to see as we continue to move through the phases of the MCU. This is a really good Iron Man. This is an outstanding Iron Man figure. They've really got Iron Man down when it comes to Marvel Legends, which they should, because all he does is just sit on the pegs and make money for them, which is fine, man. I mean, this is this is the Batman of the MCU. This is the guy who can be in all the different suits, have all the different tech, and it's just terrific. And this is a really, really good one of that. Now, later on in the Infinity line, we got two more Marvel Legends figures. We got the twins, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. Maybe not the best Scarlet Witch head sculpt. We'll certainly see better as we get into shows like Vision and Scarlet Witch. But this is a spot-on version of Pietro. I love how they got his hair and like the different textures of his hair. They have all of the texture of his kind of simple but effective jumpsuit. He has different hands, so it's easier to get him, you know, posed in the type of running poses that, that you would want to have him in in a display. So thank you for Hasbro for coming back and filling in the gaps and getting uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in this line. Now, they also did an Amazon exclusive four pack or five pack of figures that had Thor, Widow, Hawkeye, and Hulk. I didn't get that. And I looked at it online to maybe buy one to show you guys in the video that thing is like $250. I love y'all, but not that much. So we're going to look instead at the Diamond Select figures. We've seen this one when we looked at Thor The Dark World, but this is very indicative of what he looked like in Age of Ultron. We did get uh, Natalie in this. We got Black Widow. She's a little vacant in the eyes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's happening with that. Just a little bit more depth and texture to that to that eye paint would have gone a long way, but for a Diamond Select figure, it's certainly very nice. It's seven inches. It's got good, decent articulation, but, you know, okay. Now, where they did a great job, though, was with Hawkeye. That's a pretty decent Jeremy Renner head sculpt, and this is, I think, the only real Avengers Hawkeye figure that I have until we get up into Endgame and uh, Infinity War. So I'm glad that I have one in my collection, but he's pretty solid, and uh, I'll have to dig out where his bow and, bow and arrows are, but good figure. And then, of course, they did maybe the best version of Hulk. You can tell it's Age of Ultron because he has these pants on 
with sort of the red stripe that differentiates it from the first Avengers movie. Man, this thing is mammoth. It is really, really big, and it fits in with that seven-inch scale. But when you've got the Hulk, he can be huge, and so he can actually fit in with even your six-inch figures. Great expression, just really angry, powerful Hulk. Love this one. I think it's clearly superior to the Marvel Legends Hulk that came in the two-pack. Now, there's nothing wrong with this one. I mean, it's it's a good figure. It's got a good head sculpt. It just isn't as good as what Diamond Select was able to do. But this figure came in a two-pack for what, for me, was really kind of the highlight of the film, and that was the battle scene with the Hulkbuster. Now, the Hulkbuster originally came as a Build-A-Figure, but then it was re-released in the Infinity line with the Hulk, and I'm glad because not everybody was able to get that build a figure, and it made it at least available to collectors and people who wanted to get this gigantic thing. I mean, I told you how big the Diamond Select Hulk was. The Hulk Buster is significantly larger than that. Great articulation, great sculpting all the way around. I love all of this detail. This is a mammoth figure, and this is the kind of thing that you know we give Hasbro a hard time from time to time for what they do and don't do for us. But man, we've got to give them the credit that they deserve when they give us something like this, because this is just epic. Absolutely a huge hunk of plastic to add to our collections. But I do have one more figure from Age Voltron that I want to share. And it's the SH Figuarts Import Iron Man. So maybe this is the Mark 42 or Mark 43 armor. But this is in their line of figures that is mostly metallic. So there's a lot of vac metal on this figure. So it really pops and shines. Uh, and what makes this one so cool is if you flip back here and open up this panel, he's got some batteries. But what you can do is, see if I can get this panel back on. It lights up the eyes and his arc reactor. And that is is a very cool effect. So this was an import figure, so it's obviously going to be a little bit more expensive, but look at what you get. You get this unbelievable articulation. These are all metal parts through here, so this is truly an Iron Man, but that light-up feature, you can see it. You can see how cool those eyes in that arc reactor are when it's all lit up. The first Ant-Man film served as the coda to Phase 2 of the MCU. It holds the record for taking the longest time to make it to the screen, as development on the film began almost a decade before its release. As with so many Marvel movies, the key to its success was casting, with Paul Rudd leading the way as the charming ex-con Scott Lang. And much like the Guardians of the Galaxy movie before it, this film manages to mix humor, with the importance of family, creating a cast of characters that you actually care about. The smaller stakes and scale were a breath of fresh air after the global threat of Ultron, and the flick resonated with moviegoers to the tune of half a billion dollars at the box office. The final figure in Phase 2 of the MCU was a breath of fresh air with Ant-Man. Again, this is a film that I really enjoyed. I don't know that I had any real high expectations going into it, but it exceeded all of them because it has heart. You know, it, it makes you care about these characters, particularly Scott's friends like Luis, and uh, they just, they, they know how to make a good, entertaining movie. And this was like a family comedy wrapped up in a superhero film. And a lot of that goes to the portrayal of Scott Lang that Paul Rudd had. This is the Marvel Legends figure from the line. It's good. It's it's you know standard Marvel Legends articulation. Um, we've gotten better, Ant-Men. Again, thankfully, these figures continue to get better as we go along. But as a version of Ant-Man from the first movie, this is a really solid one. I like it. What I really like, though, is the figure and the design of Yellow Jacket. I kind of hate that this guy ended up just sort of being a one-off villain because, man, this thing looks awesome. I really love the stingers. I love how this tech comes around. The yellow and black with that hexagon pattern on there just looks awesome. And taking the whole idea of Yellow Jacket and turning it into the villain of the film, that's pretty brilliant. 
I love how you can see through this clear plastic. It creates that, that glass look of the mask. Man, this is strong. This is not only a strong action figure, this is a strong figure design. We've talked about how the MCU is able to take the very best ideas from decades of comic books to create their movies. And this is one where they adapted something that was done very differently in the comics and made it much better in the movies. Plus, we get teeny tiny little versions of Yellow Jacket and Ant-Man. So if you want to throw these onto your Thomas the Train sets and have them battle, these are the figures that you can do that with. But import maker SH Figure Arts actually gave us an even better Ant-Man figure. You can see the sculpting on this, the proportions are much better. The head is a little big, I think, on this Marvel Legends one. So you can see on the SH Figure Arts how much, how much better proportioned it is. That mask looks good. He also has that translucent plastic so that the eyes really shine, particularly when you can see them in the light. More sculpted detail across the chest plate and the belt where he's keeping his PIM particles. You know, all of what you would expect from an import figure. I mean, just look at the level of articulation that this hand joint has. I mean, that's, that's really good. Uh, but what made this set just stand out above anything else is you can put Ant-Man on Antony. That's right. It came with a giant ant for Ant-Man to fly around and ride on. He's got like a little saddle so that he'll fit right on here and, and ride around on Antony. So that, that for me was worth the price of admission. This was, this was not a cheap figure, uh, as you can imagine, coming from out of the country and shipping and all that stuff. But when you get to fly your Ant-Man around on Antony, totally worth it. If you thought the figures from Phase 2 were cool, check out this playlist, where the entire collection of MCU figures are covered in detail. And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.